Hello guys, feel super amazing to have you here in this video. We are going to be looking at the projected price of Bloom at launch. Yes. Also, we are going to be looking at the tokenomics and also the utility case. Why is Bloom so different from every other crypto project out there? So before we go into any that, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, come on, what are you waiting for? You've got super powers and it's about time you be just like this, you'll be the first to watch and make more informed decisions and also we'll be growing together as a family. The first thing is the utility case. Starting with the utility case, this is why Bloom is so different from every other cryptocurrency. Most of the cryptocurrency out there are just for fun and do not provide any big time utility. But more like Bloom, Bloom is a cryptocurrency that to bring cryptocurrency to you at a convenient and easy manner that means layer one layer two cryptocurrency classic tokens main coins and every cryptocurrency that you can ever think about that's what they want to do before now getting cryptocurrency can be a big deal right it requires you using an sg to get a cryptocurrency but with the bloom app you will be able to get any cryptocurrency of your choice at a go I just click on a button so this is why they are so different and one of the things that you know uh, influence the price of a cryptocurrency project is the utility case the better the utility the more the demand and the more the demand that means the price is going to push up market capitalization thus affecting the current price right the price of a token so this is why I'm so so foolish on bloom how do they intend to do this so they intend to do it by combining the advantages of centralized and decentralized exchanging so fusing it together that everybody can get those coins together to so can get any coin they want at Eco. For those that don't know what centralized exchanges are, basically centralized exchanges are platforms where you can buy and transact cryptocurrencies, right? But with a third party company like Binance, KuCoin, Bybit, or whatever, right? Why decentralized exchange? All centralized exchange, they do not, they are, they are called non custodian um, platforms, right? Where that does not require a third party. Um, company for you to you know transact or buy cryptocurrency for instance now buyers right transact cryptocurrency via a pair-to-pair -pair means so for instance you have buy, um, bitcoin and you've got money right i give you my bitcoin in exchange for for your money right be wondering so how do these guys make money right they make money via smart contracts and transaction fees when you make a transaction the contract right is executed on the blockchain network that takes like a, a transaction fee basically that's how decentralized exchange make money uh, other advantages too unlike the central uh, centralized exchanges centralized entities are not regulated by government of, of uh, policies right they are less regulated by government policies if you are in Nigeria you know that one of the things that happened in Nigeria last year was that Binance biggest uh, crypto currency exchange group was banned due to the government policy and that affected a lot of like people that in, are transacting in crypto because they could not use it or for people to use it they have to you know pay for expensive VPNs that is one of the disadvantages that centralized exchanges have they are regulated by government policies and also now because they are owned by companies right they charge a lot of they, they can increase they can inflate their transaction fees which is not good and also now they have it has only advantages for instance if you want to buy a cryptocurrency see ethereum right and uh, you are stuck you can reach out to the exchange say binance or kucoin or bybit right and they can help you through all the decentralized exchange that the transaction are done pay to pay if it involves like a little bit of technicalities if you are not serving the crypto space now and anything goes from for instance maybe you copy the transaction what address wrong right it's either it doesn't execute or now if you send it to the wrong address you have lost that asset forever it has zone pros and cons and also the other advantage that centralized exchanges has over the centralized exchange is the fact that 
Now, in terms of security, is very, very secure. Now, if you remember 2019, one of the major cryptocurrencies uh, exchange platform, which is Zootopia, was hacked. What was hacked with over hackers they took over I think 20 billion years the last worth of like cryptocurrency, and that led to the crash of a crypto uh, currency exchange, right? But with Uniswap, Swap, and all the decentralized exchange, all those things are not what you hear because the transaction is between you and the person to so take control of like your recovery freeze your seed freeze and your asset right this everything is under your control under the user's control so basically that's the advantage that decentralized exchange it has over a centralized exchange. Just imagine that look at all the merits of decentralized uh, centralized exchange. Plum is fusing all those together that to make cryptocurrency are valuable for all of you. They are taking away like the government regulations and government policies and also they are bringing cryptocurrency to you in a safe and secure matter, manner so just look at the potentials are very very huge that's why i'm very very bullish on this so we have looked at like the utility case and what bloom is next thing is let's look at like the tokenomics right so basically when you hear of tokenomics so basically it's what comes to mind it's the amount of token in relationship to the price right so uh, when we are talking about tokenomics now these are the things that you should look at for so for bloom tokenomics is like the total supply so you have total token supply so total token supply or max supply is basically the amount of token that is being minted or generated right so that's what means then circulating supply is the amount of token that is in circulation on like the exchanges right then we have the market cap market capitalization is the worth just consider it at the worth of the entire token for us to determine the price of the tokens these are like the three matrices that we are going to be looking at so taking because they have not launched yet, we are going to be using other successful crypto projects as Yastic as basis for our calculations. And also, I would love to, you know, hear your points in the comment section if you think we are, you know, in line with our projections and how much you think like Bloom is going to be at launch. Starting with first thing, right, which is we are going to go to get the IO. So I'm going to go to my PC and uh, so we're using the pre-market price. So we have an estimate of how much they are going to, you know, put it there. Let's go to get the IO. When we click on pre-market tra trading, so guys, so to determine the price of Bloom at launch is pretty easy, right? So the first thing we look at is like the amount that investors will invest in the project. So that refers to uh, the market capitalization. I stated earlier that the market capitalization is the worth of the crypto asset, right? So to get this, to get an idea of how much investors are willing to, you know, to invest. Now let's look at the pre-market value at gator.io so here if you go to the pre-market um gator.io so bloom has been listed there so let's quickly go search for bloom here and uh, we are going to see how much is currently trading at. so here is currently trading at 0 0.0055 so we will click on trade now to get more details uh, about about the about the crypto asset right so bloom usdt so it has increased by 6.58 percent so this is an indication that oh actually a lot of traders are interested in this in this crypto assets and i told you that that's like one of the major determinants of of it right so one of the things that we're going to look at the trading volume so here the trading volume to so this pre-market right so this is the price and uh, let's look at the volume in 24 hours 
So the volume in 24 hours is 5.2 million. So that's what has been invested in 24 hours. For me to give you like a more realistic understanding of how to do these calculations, let me go to coin market cap and just use any of the or any of the coins and I calculate and show you how to calculate um the to determine the price of a crypto asset price. Okay, guys, so using dogs as a yardstick, right? So to calculate the price, to determine the price of dogs, for instance. So we are going to calculate the market cap capitalization. We are going to divide the market capitalization divided by the circulating supply, not the total mass supply. You see that the total mass supply is different from this. So probably there's a reason why most good projects, right? They don't put the total supply and the circulating supply to be the same, right? So they are using to control inflation. So we like to determine, to regulate the price, maybe by many burning process or, you know, releasing periodically so as to control the price. So it's a smart thing. So to calculate, to determine the price of this crypto asset, so what we are going to do is that calculate 371 million to here. So this is the exact amount. So just copy that, right? Divided by, so this is the circulating supply. So here, the circulating supply we copy. Divided by, divided by this amount. Divided by 516.750 billion. So it's going to give you, see? So you see, this give, gives us 7.1693 exponential 4. So this is raised to exponential negative 4, right? So here it seems to have 0.00714. So basically, that's how to determine the price of any cryptocurrency. So it's pretty easy and straightforward. So using this, right, to determine the price of room. So let's assume that at launch, let's go back to the. So let's use this as. The yardstick. Let's assume because these are assumptions, right? That at launch, so let's go to at launch, so market cap at launch. So let's go to all time high, so all time, right? So at all time, so this is the money that, so the total capitalization at all time is this is the market capitalization at all time. So divided by, so if we are assuming that. Maybe when people, because of the boards and all that, like different people are supposed to invest this amount of money, so 372 billion, you understand? Uh, so let's look at the market cap there. So to just do, just go up, okay? So it's like 700, like all time, it's, so this is all time. So let's assume that 800 and At launch right so that's like the all time immediately like they launch it because a lot of people want to just get a piece of the cake right so so let's just say like 872 million was invite was invested so we are going to paste uh, like 870 let's copy that okay so we'll just write it physically right just manually rather so you have 800 and let's say 850 million was so 887 million was invested into Bloom so divided by the circulating supply so for most projects well since we we want to be at the safe side what we'll do is that the circulating supply will be equal to the total Supply. So we are going to divide this by 1 billion, 100 billion, because what was written there, this one, billion, so 100 billion. So whatever it is will be the price of token. So you see, the price of Bloom, right, at launch will be 0 0.008. And you see that it's not too different from the pre market price. The pre market price is 0 0.004. So basically, we are expecting that the 
price, you understand, depended on the market capitalization, as in the amount investors are willing to invest, will range from 0 0.0853 to probably 0 0.0859 or something. So guys, I hope you learned a few things and do not forget to subscribe to this family so we we'll grow together. Till next time, I remain with Jason Chess. And if you've not increased your bloom point, I think it's about time.